Hello right, folks, this one's going to be a compilation of recordings and photographs regarding building of the polytunnel. Um, it came from Northern, Northern Polytunnels, reasonable price, I'll put a link in the video to anybody that wants to have a look on their website. It's taken me a while to get it built, I actually bought it last year, but between putting my back out and other issues and that, I only got around to it this year to put it up. It's almost finished. There's a few final finishing touches inside it that I've got to do, but primarily it's all done. So, as I say, this is going to be little videos, a few pictures put together to sort of show the process of it. There's a few of them that, when I'm doing videos, I actually start off on one and then turn it the other way and didn't realise that it didn't flip over automatically on the video. So I think you're going to get some where you're looking at everything cockeyed. But we'll have a little look down i'll try and spin this around and i'll take you down and have a look there we go right <laughs> try and keep it smooth so we're not jumping around uh, for some runner beans but there we go That's roughly the position for the start of the polytunnel. Just got to get it lined up along the fence yet, work out the angle from the gate coming up. And it's only 14 foot wide, so it's approximately from where the tape measure is on that one to pretty much the beginning part of this pole here. That's the width of it, and then length is starting there up to the fourth pole so fairly decent size for a hobbyist so, all right i'll take another, either another video or some pictures as we get going All right, that's everything done for today. Got the trench done along there because the ground's so far unlevel. As you can see, that end is almost buried. That end's almost in the air. But by the time we grade it up, it's had to go right down in. So I'm probably gonna have to do a raised bed the other side of it, double boarding to try and lift it up a bit. But I've just got to put the scaffolding boards on the same as this side on that side tomorrow morning and then put the main hoops over, attach the centre post and go from there. So I'll do a little update once I get to that stage. All right, that's the bulk of the framework done. See, it's just got to be all balanced up, the brackets and that raised to the right level. And then the door frames put in. Center tube's got to be leveled out. But doing all right. Carry on again tomorrow. Just making a bit of use of the homemade tremel. Much 
show you what it looks like at the end. Alright, another little update. The trench that goes around the polytunnel. It's going to be hard to see, I think, because of the light. But it's all trenched in. Make sure it doesn't fall down it. So that's dug all the way around it now. Ready for the polythene to go over. So tomorrow we're going to nip out and get the battens to put around the framework on the door frames that the polythene is going to get pinned by. And I'll go around all the little joints and brackets with some gaffer tape just to make them nice and smooth. All the joints here, I'll probably staple some polythene onto the corner of the boards. But it's prepping it ready for the weekend when my lad's off college and he can get me out to get the polythene on. So that should be the next picture. All right, see you soon. All right, we've now got all the anti-hotspot tape laid over. All the hoops, all the way around. I've put some extra gaffer tape just in areas where there's a possibility of it maybe snagging on something. So it's better to be safe than sorry. The door frames are all lined up. The idea being when we pull the polythene over the top of that, we use these other parts, and they go over the top of the polythene, and that's what pins it into place. And then obviously there's another part down each side of the door frame as well. And obviously the rest of it's in the trench and backfilled with soil to pull it tight. So let me just get back a bit and see a full picture. So there we go. Now the next one should be with the polythene up. Unfortunately, I haven't got anywhere to put the camera safely at the moment to try and record it. So we'll see how it goes after that. Bye. All right, that's the polythene on. Just got to finish Burying in down the sides and the ends. It's all pinned in. Nice and secure. A bit dark down that side, but... Just got to finish with the trench along here, filling it in. Step in. Just turn it. So tomorrow, it's a case of coming out, sorting out these two raised beds a bit better because there's more soil in one than the other one. Get the doors made, and we're away. So we'll have a little shifty. What I've got to do on the side here, there's going to be a footpath running down the side, but because the ground's higher up this side than it is to the actual polytunnel, you can see the shadow of the board inside, and I don't want to come higher than that. So I'll end up putting the raised bed in, going this direction, so that it will keep it a bit lower there, but that's to sort out. Let's have a also this is the the back door. Uh, 
just got to get the last bit of the soil in for finishing off this hole here and uh, leveling it out down the side here. And then there's going to be decking boards put along the bottom of the fence, weed membrane, and then bark chippings in the end will go down there, or wood chips, whatever I can get from an arborist. There we go, the last of the marrows growing in there, and the delicata squash are doing well. Should be ready for harvest on them soon. And then let's have a... So, there's the front. <coughs> there's going to be a little post going in there with a hook and eye, or a captain's hook, or a cabin hook, they call them, just to hold the door open in the wind, and then they'll do the same for when I open the gate. That will go on to it as well. But for now, we'll just lean that over there just to stop it moving. Right. I've got my chilli peppers out of the greenhouse into here. A bit later on, I'm going to put them up and sit them on the raised bed. And they'll all be in there. So, no, it's all up airtight. Yeah. Now, obviously, there's still going to be a centre bed. Let me try and come back a bit further. There'll be a centre bed going in. It's going to work out about four foot. But it'll only come down about, about ten foot. Because I'm going to leave a little space at this end for a, a little potting bench just coming across between the door there so it'll cover it over. So I can open it from the outside for letting the air through on that side. But now, one thing that is going to be a bit different is you can see where the raised bed goes down to. That will actually be the end level of the floor. Because where the ground comes up at a big slope outside, I've sunk it in so that I can get a bit of extra headroom in here. So it'll be down at the bottom of the board in there, and then obviously the raised bed in the middle will be the same height as the two raised beds on the side. That will then be primarily, probably, tomato plants and such like in the decent weather. So that'll be down the centre section. Obviously, the chilies this year I'm going to keep in the buckets that they're in, but next year I'll probably plant them straight into one of the raised beds alongside probably aubergines and such like cucumbers i'm thinking about growing two plants at either end and then training them up and mesh over the top of the doorway because it's quite a nice high-sided one and it will give you a lot nice distance from the hang down but yeah so other than that that's about it I'll just spin around all right hopefully you find this one Reasonably interesting, like I said, there's just a fair few pictures and that. It might come across a bit long-winded at times, I don't know. But if you do like it, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want and share it with anybody that you can think of sharing with. All right, cheers. Bye-bye.